This video explains the motivation and solution of the string.prototype.match all proposal, which is included in the language specification of 2020, the 11th edition. Here we go, but make sure to hit the like button in case you enjoyed, and subscribe to not miss new content. Capturing groups in regular expressions are multiple characters that are enclosed within parentheses and treated as a single unit. This means that setting a quantifier at the end of the parentheses allows referring to the entire grouped characters, and not just the single leading character. When involving the strings match method against a regular expression containing capturing groups, the result is typically an array, that would be null if no matches are found, and might be produced with different content, depending on whether we use the G flag or not. Let's demonstrate the difference between the results. To begin with, we execute the method against a global regular expression that's built from multiple groups. As it stands, the result doesn't contain the matching capturing groups at all, but rather the entire set of characters that are matched. For instance, E and SD1 are strings matching the capturing groups, so we would expect them to be contained as well. That is, the capturing groups are ignored. This time we execute against the same regex without using the G flag, well, the multiple capturing groups indeed considered in the result, but it refers only to the first match. Notice that the result isn't just an array of plain strings, it actually has additional properties, index, input and groups. Later, we'll name these objects matching values. Having said that, what if we'd like to combine both use cases we mentioned at the same time? Meaning, to retrieve results for all matches considering the capturing groups, and also retrieve them simply without getting complicated. How do we make it? The proposal specifies a new string.prototype.matchAll method that addresses the case in question. From the official definition of the specification, we can understand that the method returns an iterator representing results of the matches, and null if there are no matches. Also, and just as importantly, all results of each match are contained. Put it simply, the results of each match, namely matching values, truly consider capturing groups and are accessible through the returned iterator. Now we're going to introduce several practical usages for the method. Let's start with executing the strings match all method against our regex. The method merely takes a regex, like strings match method does, but differs in the result type. Importantly, only global regular expressions are acceptable, which means, we must use the G flag to avoid getting a type error. Since we already know that the result is an iterator, we spread it into result as array variable to easily access the matching values. The first matching value is absolutely identical to the result in the case of strings match method without the G flag. The cool thing, however, is having an additional matching value, which refers to the second match and also considers its capturing groups. Thereby, instead of messing with complicated solutions to combine the global matching results with capturing groups, the method provides this combination simply and natively. So far, the common practice to iterate all the matching values was using a while loop. But now, with strings match all method, we can benefit from the returned iterator to implement conveniently. The output obviously remains the same. Also, we can destructure the iterator to access a specific matching value. It's worth mentioning that both practices exhaust the iterator, we reach the last value, meaning, we need to have another non-consumed iterator by reinvoking the method in order to iterate or destructure, which actually iterates indirectly, again. Hence, another way to go is by creating an array to be iterated repeatedly, thus it's possible to iterate the matching values as we please without reinvoking the method. The truth is that in the majority of cases we could settle for an iterator, and that's the primary reason behind the design decision to always return an iterator instead of an array. Other than that, there is a matter of performance, the iterator performs the matching for each invocation of its next method. Practically this means that if we decide to break the loop in the middle or destructure only part of the values, the next matches wouldn't be performed. By contrast, if the result was an array, all the matching values would be collected beforehand without exception. It's definitely significant when there are tons of potential matches and are capturing groups. Anyway, on the whole, the point is we're not restricted. The iterator provides the versatility to iterate, destructure or transform by choice to an array, depending on our use case. Don't forget to hit the like button in case you enjoy, and to subscribe to my channel.